Hello everyone, and now we're going to be looking at a new topic called integration. And I should mention that this is just an extension of differentiation. So if you have not gone to differentiation, you should try to go through it first. So what is integration? It can be thought of as the reverse of differentiation. And it is usually denoted by this symbol, it's called the integral symbol. So how do we explain this? Let's imagine that we are told that y is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 3. I was told to find the value of dy over dx. So what this means is that we should differentiate this function. So what does that become? We know that dy over dx will be equal to what? 2x then plus 2. Since it is a constant, when you differentiate a constant, you get 0. So it terminates out. So we get 2x plus 2. So now, if we want to integrate this function, or if we want to integrate dy over dx to get our original function, what do we have to do? So this we can write as what? As dy is equals to 2x plus 2 dx. So if I try to integrate dy, I'm going to get y, which is the inverse we are talking about. So what does the integral of 2x gives me? It has to give me this original value that was here, which is what? x squared. And the integral of 2 gives me 2x. Then we add a constant of integration, which you see. And this constant can assume any number. And it represents the number that was terminated when we differentiated the original function. So as you can see, this bears a striking resemblance to the original function. And that is what we mean when we say integration is the reverse of differentiation. How to actually differentiate, we are going to talk about that in a short while. So in this section, we are going to be talking about the integration of explicit algebraic and simple trigonometrical functions for moving to the integration of the simple applications of integration. How do we apply the concepts of integration? And finally, we are going to talk about one major application with, which has to do with calculating the area under the curve. So how do we apply integration to find the area under the curve? So these are what we are going to be looking at. So let's get right to it.